Hi. As many of you know, I'm a huge fan of quarter mile dirt track racing and the technology behind it. It was my first career. I used to build late models and used to race. So when my friend Trish asked me if I would help her build a pure stock car for the Sunset Speedway in Banks, Oregon, I immediately jumped on the offer. Pure stock cars are cars that are required to run stock suspension, stock motors, and stock frames. So I set her out to find uh, a mid-70s to 80s Camaro, and that's what she found, a beautiful 1981 Camaro. And she proceeded to strip out all the seats and take the fenders off and skin the doors. And so this is going to be the foundation for, for our pure stock. And uh, in this video series, I'll show you how to build the chassis, the roll cage, and brace it up and get it prepared to race. All right, so here I'm cleaning the frame. The way the front frames on these Camaros and many GM cars of this vintage, they have two halves that are stamped steel that are pressed together and then what machine welded. So you'll need to go through and clean all the dirt and grease and undercoat off and then re-weld the seams. Um, the seams are good enough for street cars, but not good enough for racing. Um, if you look at the welds, there's wires hanging out of it and big voids. Um, this particular car had a little bit of damage up front, so I had to um, beat some of that metal back together. Constantly using the heat of the weld um, to try to clean the next area. So now I'm going to work on the top side of the chassis. Um, this is often overlooked. I'm going to re-weld this also. But this is where key suspension components hook in. Um, there's idler arms, there's the gearbox on their side. Here I'm working on the gearbox. Oh, warning, plumber crack. There's also shock towers. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to show it here in the video, but those get welded also. The A-arms hook to those and the shocks hook to them. It's a very smelly, stinky process. So here I'm measuring the bar that's going to brace up the two front frame horns. Um, it's pretty important to brace up the front frame horns since your suspension ties into there and can deflect. Measure twice. The ends of these pipes are pretty jagged, so I just use the end of my abrasive saw. Probably not the right procedure to do that, but it works. So here I'm relieving one side with the plasma cutter so I can slip the bar in. Oh, I also had to cut some semicircles so the bar would fit into the chassis a little bit better. So now the bar is fitting in there, and I'm, I'm measuring out to take some pie sections out of the frame so I can bend some tabs down and tie this front brace bar in a little bit better. I think it's kind of cool how uh, the hammer sounds when I am um, sped the video up here. It kind of sounds like a cartoon or something. Like, quick, let's make something. Trish is in here making sure I'm not messing up her chassis. All right, I'm, I'm uh, cutting out the pie sections now. This is always fun, end up sparks in your hair. Well, I see I'm going to have to get some different apparel. I know building race cars isn't a fashion show, but the plumber's craft is not acceptable. So part of the deal with Trish is um, she gets to learn how to do this herself next time. So I've got the pie sections cut out. I'm going to come back with the big five pound hammer, I think. Oh, nope, nope. Looks like I'm in there with the angle grinder. So this is a sandpaper disc, and I'm 
cleaning the metal up and I'm also taking the slag off from the plasma cutter. You don't want to weld over the slag because it'll pollute your weld. Oh, nice and clean. Oh, still going. That fits in there nicely. Now I'm, I'm pounding down these tabs so that this bar will be really stitched in nicely to the, the chassis. Back into cartoon hammer mode. And see those those are bent in. Now the metal is going to deflect back a little bit, so I'm going to bring the welder in and I'm going to tack down um, different areas. So I'm doing the back side of the weld, that semicircle I was talking about, and now that it's a little more rigid, I'm going to drive these metal pieces in closer. So I'm just going to repeat this over and over again. Weld a section, drive the pieces of metal in closer so I can get a, a really good weld. I've seen tons of pure stock cars and even super stock type cars where people just slap the bar in across here and don't stitch it in and they get into a minor collision and it just rips the frame out and their bumpers dragging the ground. I think at this point I'm, I'm really pissed off because the wind started blowing and it's blowing my shield gas away from my MIG welder. Some of these welds are fun because you have to lay underneath the car and uh, do out of position welds, having all these big sparks land in your face and hair and everywhere else. Oh, got the inspection from Trish. I guess it was okay. Yeah, yeah, here comes the out of position welds. Oh, the, the welder is binding. Trish, Trish, straighten this out for me. The, the, if the wire snags, then it's not going to feed at the right rate, and then you're going to end up with problems in your weld. So keep your welding nozzle straight, or welding cable straight, I suppose. I have one of the new Miller um, MIG welders that can work on 220 or 110. It's really a nice welder. Uh, I recommend it. It's better than my old Hobart that I used to have. All right, so there it is. The entire front brace is done. Uh, next, we'll move to tying the chassis together. And I'm Jerry Ellsworth. Thanks for watching.